without any delay, I just introduce your colleague. الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونتوب إليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئة أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضل فلا هاج له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم وبعد Uh, as you know, brothers, and um, for those sisters, this is the first time we have sisters in the class. Uh, the session is our, our weekly class, which we have every Friday. And typically, the book that we're currently studying is The Signs of the Hour by Ibn Kathir. Uh, but I thought that for tonight, since this was going to be a uh, first session here at George Mason, and also because of the we're coming to the, the days of Al-Hajj, Uh, I will talk about worshipping Allah in the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. Uh, as you know, uh, my brothers and sisters, that this is the 26th, or this, today was the 26th of Dhul Qa'idah. I mean, tomorrow is the 27th, and uh, uh, Sunday will be the 28th, Monday the 29th, meaning the first of Dhul Hijjah will be Tuesday or Wednesday, depending if the month of Dhul, uh, Dhul Qa'idah is going to be 29 or 30 days. And these ten days have a special significance in our religion. Uh, for we find a hadith reported by Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that there are no days in which righteous action is more beloved to Allah than in these ten days. There are no days in which righteous action is more beloved to Allah than these ten days. They said, O Messenger of Allah, Even jihad in the path of Allah? They said, O Messenger of Allah, even jihad in the path of Allah? The Prophet wasallam said, Even jihad in the path of Allah, with the exception of a man who goes forth with his body and wealth, and he does not come back with anything of that. In other words, he takes his money and spends it all to, to go to jihad, and ends up uh, becoming a martyr in jihad. This is a great hadith. The Prophet ﷺ is telling us that in these 10 days of Dhul Hijjah, which will begin, as I mentioned, either on Tuesday or Wednesday, there is no time in which Allah loves more or, the, uh, or is better the good deeds than in these 10 days. Even jihad in the path of Allah. With the exception of one type of jihad. That jihad in which the mujahid goes forth with his wealth and with his soul and comes back without anything. In other words, he dies in the path of Allah and so uh, and we, we will discuss this hadith from two aspects uh, the first aspect which I'd like to discuss in this hadith is the aspect of the importance of these ten days in and of itself and then the second aspect which I'd like to mention is the importance and the merit of worshipping Allah in these ten days so what about these ten days themselves We should know, my brothers and sisters, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, among His qualities, is that He's the Creator. And part of Him being the Creator is that He selects what He wants. So He selects of people, He selected certain human beings to be His messengers, to whom He sent His angels to, 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 uh, uh, to spread His message. He selected certain places on the earth, like he selected Mecca, for instance, as a place where his house uh, would be established for his worship. He selected also certain times during the year. And from this selection, of course, is uh, this uh, ten days of Dhul Hijjah. Because, as we know, there are four months in the year in which uh, they are considered to be months which are I mean, they translate it as sacred, but I mean, it means months which should not be violated. Okay, rather maybe the word sacred. And these four months are, who, who knows these four months? Huh? Huh? This is all, oh, it's somewhat to the answers, I think I heard three of the four months. It's Dhul Qa'idah, which is the month we're in now. And Dhul Hijjah, which is the next month, the month of Hajj. And then the month after Muharram. And the fourth month is the month of Rajab. The month of Rajab, which is between... Uh, the month of Rajab now, which comes before the month of Sha'ban. 
Um, so these are the four months which it is are, are, are months which should not be violated. Part of that violation was that that they should not, you know, shed blood in that month. And indeed, the uh, during the pagan Arabs, they would not try to fight during these months because they understood its its sanctity. This is something which was left from the religion of Ibrahim salam, which remained among the Arabs even in their jahiliyyah. Anyway, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose, you know, these months and specifically uh, he chose uh, this this month of Zul Hijjah, these ten days uh, I should say, uh, in, in uh, Zul, uh, Zul Hijjah. And that's where we find the hadith in Ibn Habban, Ibn Habban where upon Jabra where the Prophet وسلم, says that there is no days which are more preferred to Allah than the ten days of Zul Hijjah. And likewise, we find one hadith says it's the best days of the world, these ten days of Dhul Hijjah. And one of the tabi'in, Ka'ab, um, uh, who was a Jewish rabbi who took, uh, became a Muslim, said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, selected, uh, from, uh, time these, those four sacred months. And from those four sacred months, the most beloved to Allah is Dhul Hijjah. And from Dhul Hijjah, the most beloved to Allah is these ten, first ten days. And Allah uh, refer to these ten days in, in, in a number of passages in the Quran. Uh, one of these passages is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Fajr, Awal Fajr, Walayalin Ash. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by the dawn and then he swears by the evenings of these ten days, these the nights of these ten days. And as we've mentioned before in other classes, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes an oath by something it points to that object being something great something of very high significance and so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, takes an oath by the dawn which is, is a significant great thing because when dawn occurs the, 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 you, you, the light appears on the earth this is a very you know um, um, wonderful or wondrous uh, thing that you, that you notice in a lot of physical creations and also in the spiritual realm uh, when the uh, dawn occurs what happens? Who comes down to earth at dawn time? <coughs> the angels. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wal Quran, huh? Wal Quran al Fajri, uh, that the recitation of the Quran at, at, at Fajr time, right? That this recitation is witnessed. Witnessed by whom? By the angels. And the Prophet said that there are angels which, I think, there are angels which uh, come down uh, at, the, uh, at, at dawn time and at Asr time. These are the angels which you know, guard over you and write your deeds. They, they switch, uh, they switch during uh, these two times. So this is something I mean, great. Then by these ten days, and what's the significance of these ten days? Well, this is the time when Hajj occurs, and so this is a time of great worship to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So it's of of great spiritual uh, meaning. And and for this reason, the righteous actions in these days have this importance uh, matter. And this comes to our second topic that that righteous actions in these days. Now, this hadith shows us, the hadith of Ibn Abbas that I started with, that when you do a righteous action, in these ten days is more beloved to Allah than in other time. Without any exception of what the deed is. I mean, there's no exceptions to this, except for one type of jihad. And that type of jihad is the best jihad. Because one time the Prophet was asked, what is the best uh, type of jihad? And he mentions, he said, it's that type of jihad in which your steed, your horse, you know, is slaughtered and your blood shed. So, the best type of jihad is that which results in the mujahid going forth and he is killed in such a way that also his horse, because most of the jihad throughout history and until the end of time will be on horses. I mean, this is what we see now is, is an exception to the the history of humanity. And so this is the type of jihad that, that is the, the only exception to it. And one time, the, um, <coughs> the a man was making dua, and uh, the, the man said, Oh Allah, uh, give me uh, what your, uh, the best of what you give to your righteous servants. Oh Allah, give me the best of what you give to your righteous surgeons, uh, ser- uh, servants. So the Prophet ﷺ heard the man making this dua, and he said, Then your steed would be uh, slaughtered, and your, uh, you will become a martyr. I mean, if you're asking for Allah for the best of what He gives to His righteous servants, that means you're asking Allah that your steed be slaughtered, you know, uh, and that your, um, you become, you know, martyred on the battlefield. And for this reason, this, this is the importance of these days. So, 
the only exception here is, uh, is this type of jihad this type of jihad is the only exception meaning that whatever you do in these 10 days which as I said will start Tuesday or Wednesday depending on when the sighting of the moon is it is better in these 10 days than in the other thing. and so for this reason you find that the salaf the earliest Muslims used to pay much attention to these 10 days for example uh, we find um, I'm trying to think who, who amongst the salaf uh, we find the narrator who reports this hadith upon Ibn Abbas and let me see if I have it here anyway so one of the, one of the tabi'een uh, his name uh, slips in my, my, my mind now but when, when these ten days used to come and he's the one who's reporting upon Ibn Abbas that the Prophet ﷺ said that there are no ten days in which righteous action is more behold by he would just you know be so concentrating and exert his energy to worship of Allah Azza wa Jal to the point where it was I mean that he himself had difficulty in continuing in other words he exerted his energy so much in these ten days to the point that he himself had difficulty in, in, in keeping up what he, he put upon himself and indeed um, part of that is fasting in these ten days we find a hadith uh, reported by the Prophet's wife uh, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who is also the daughter of Umar ibn Khattab Hafsa, who says that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to fast all of these uh, days and likewise we find from the Salaf we find for instance uh, Ibn Sarin and we find Qatada saying that to fast a day among these ten days is equivalent to fasting a year and we find al Hassan reporting upon Anas ibn Malik the Prophet's companion saying that to fast a day is like to fast a thousand uh, 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 a thousand uh, days and to fast the day of Arafah which is the ninth day is as if you're fasting ten thousand days so how the Salaf used to consider and that's just concerning fasting and uh, likewise we find uh, concerning uh, standing at night uh, and I, I meant the, uh, the and now remember who the tabi'i is Sa'id bin Jubair who reported Ibn Abbas um, that, the, that they used to stand during the night and spend their time during these nights you know praying uh, to Allah Azawajal. and likewise they used to, among the acts of worship that they used to pay attention to is praising Allah and remembering Allah Azawajal. in fact Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions this in Surah Al-Hajj where he mentions about the, the pilgrimage and the acts that go on in this time and he says that they will mention Allah's name in known days these known days are these days of the ten days of Dhul Hijjah and we find a hadith in uh, the Musnad of Imam Ahmed where the Prophet ﷺ mentions the superiority of these days and he says so therefore uh, do much uh, saying of la ilaha Allah and much uh, takbir and much saying of Allahu Akbar and much saying of Alhamdulillah and uh, likewise we find that amongst the salaf for instance that uh, we find for instance Ibn Umar and Abu Huraira would go to the marketplace during these uh, 10 days and would make takbir in the marketplace and the people would follow them in takbir and they had no reason the narration reports they have no reason to go to the marketplace just for this purpose I mean imagine they would go to because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants his name to be mentioned wants his name to be heard so they would go to the marketplace not to buy anything not to meet anybody not to talk to anybody but they would only go for the purpose of praising Allah azza wa jal and when the people used to hear uh, them make takbir saying Allahu Akbar and so forth they would uh, do so and that is why Imam al-Shafi'i and Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal are of the opinion that audible dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal during these 10 days is something which is the sunnah points to its uh, or the acts of the salaf points to its merit so there's a difference that in the shafi'i said only if you see those animals which will be slaughtered then you should make the public um, the, uh, the audible uh, dhikr but Imam Ahmed said whether you see these animals to be slaughtered or not then you should make the um, uh, this type of public dhikr so the point is, is that when we pray, when we pray in these uh, uh, ten days, and when we uh, fast in these ten days, and when we read Quran in these ten days, and when we make dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal in these ten days, and when we do any sort of good deed in these ten days, Allah loves this more than if we did it outside of His time. On the same respect, or, in the, or in the, uh, from the other perspective, is that when you sin in these ten days, the sin is greater. 
You know, because sins can be magnified depending upon the place or the time or the person. The sin of the one who knows is not like the sin of the one who does not know. The place to sin in Mecca and Medina is not like sinning in elsewhere in the world. And to sin in these times uh, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants, him to, wants us to increase in worship and to increase in good deeds, also sins in this month are greater and are magnified. And so just as we must pay attention to doing good deeds, we must also pay attention to avoiding sinfulness in these ten days. Um, now, somebody might ask the question, okay, why, why is this? I mean, wh- why, you know, why is this, uh, this important? This all goes back to the issue of the purpose of our creation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us for a great reason. I mean, why are we here on earth? I mean, what is this all about? And why were we born? And why, why are we living here? And what will happen to us at our time of our death? This is all for a wisdom, a great reason. And I would think people, I mean, would, I mean especially um, people who I mean, come to a university like this, or you know, people in our time generally who have uh, some sort of information, or some sort of knowledge regarding how the universe is, we find that there is nothing in the universe which is without reason. That everything, even what it might, it might appear to be the most insignificant thing, whether in our bodies or in the environment or so forth, has a wisdom to it and has an essential purpose. And yet we are the crown of the creation, right? We can recognize that. And so therefore we also have a wisdom. What is that wisdom? It's worship of Allah Azza wa Jalla. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I have not created jinns nor men but to worship me. I have not created jinns nor men but to worship me. And this worship as we have mentioned many times is built upon three pillars. Three emotions of the heart. Love of Allah, hope of His mercy, and fear of His wrath. When we stand up to pray, we do so because we love Allah. And we love Allah because He is perfect in His names and attributes. And so therefore, we perfection is, is, it leads us just to love Him because He's perfect. And likewise, we love Him because of His blessings, which are innumerable. The greatest blessing being that of Islam. And similarly, we hope for His mercy because we all know that we will die and we will face judgment and there's either paradise or hell there is no middle there is no difference though as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says فَرِيقٌ فِي الْجَنَّةِ وَفَرِيقٌ فِي السَّعِيرِ there is a party in the, in the garden and there is a party in the blazing fire so we hope for that mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal and we fear of His wrath so when we pray we do so because we love Allah Azza wa Jal we love to praise Him because He is perfect we love to thank Him because He has blessed us and we also pray because we hope that He is merciful with us. And we also pray because we fear that by not doing so, He will be angered with us and He'll punish us. And the same thing when we give charity, uh, zakah, whether it's the obligatory charity or a, just a voluntary charity, and the same thing when we fast, the same thing when we make pilgrimage to Mecca, or any other act in a, of worship, whether it be reading the Qur'an, uh, making dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal, uh, waging jihad in the path of Allah, calling unto Allah, commanding good, forbidding evil, being kind to one's parents, being kind to neighbors, even being kind to animals can be an act of worship, and so therefore it's all done out of love and hope and fear. And this worship of Allah Azza wa Jal, you find human beings are three groups. There are those people who who worship Allah Azza wa Jal Allah. And these are the Muslims, uh, with the exception of those Muslims who are Muslims by name but by deed. They fall into the other two categories. What are these other two categories? There's a group of people who are too arrogant to worship. They don't feel a need to, to submit to Allah Azza wa Jal. Either because they're too busy, they feel that their worldly affairs, 